thirsty to be given, but I'll never end up drinking if I'm left here. Oh, I just need a raft to cross the divide that's shaping me from these barren sands to those foreign lands of self. Just to wait here. Standing on the sun's going out on me. Over the horizon, and hope now is dying and dark. All right, we're live. We are very live. All right. So, hey guys, I'm with uh, Isaac. Ask yourself here. We're going to be responding to Jeff Nelson. For those of you who may not be aware, Jeff Nelson has commented. He's made a Twitter thread actually on the debate that uh, myself and Daniel Blardo had with Mike the Vegan. Uh, that was posted to my channel several days ago. He made this long Twitter thread about it. Um, 
we'll be responding to that. I try to engage him. Um, well, I can't engage him because he actually has me blocked. He's had me blocked for, I don't know, around, I don't know how many months now, but he's, it doesn't stop him from subtweeting me. It doesn't stop him from trying to respond to the things I'm saying, of course, only in a way that such that I can't actually respond back because he's blocked me. So we'll go through his um, Twitter response, Twitter feed. We'll, uh, we tried to get him to debate. Uh, so those who he hasn't blocked have tried to get him to debate me. He's refused. We've tried again and again, but the challenge is still open, Jeff. So if you're watching this, I'm more than happy to have a discussion with you. Let's have a conversation. Um, what worst comes to worst, you could be wrong. Best comes to worst, I could be wrong. And hopefully we both get closer to the truth. What, what is there? What could be wrong with that? I mean, let's, let's have at it. So without that, without further ado, we're going to go well, through the Twitter feed. Oh, yeah, tiny yeah, bit yeah. tiny bit of further ado so let's we'll say oh, okay, one or two so. things now because it looks like he's subtweeting you he can deny technically that the tweet was about you but everyone should just notice that the timing is very suspect and the content is very suspect right also so, no one no one else has made the no one else has made the objection i have in conjunction that specific objection find anyone else who's made that specific objection yeah that's what i mean by i say the content with those specific numbers yeah so it's like the content With those of those specific numbers. That's the yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all it's pretty fucking obvious, right? So, Avi, this is the context for anyone who missed yeah. it. Avi and Danielle Bellardo, mm -hmm. who's a cardiologist, uh, they did a stream. I moderated, but although I barely talked. Um, and this ended in, with Mike the Vegan, and this ended in them actually convincing Mike that there's not good evidence to believe that. Um, uh, vegan diet reverses uh, heart disease. And for the record, their position, as far as I understand, is that it uh, stops the progression of heart disease, which is substantial, but uh, doesn't doesn't. There's not clear evidence for reversal. So Mike was very uh, very honest there and ended up conceding at the end of that discussion, which is respectable. But the next day, or within a day or two, like very shortly after this video is out, Jeff puts out a tweet. And his tweet is a response to this exact objection about uh, the minimal luminal diameter and uh, the 10% overall stenosis, stenosis. change, okay. uh, which it, it's, it's like, okay, so right after the discussion, he makes a tweet about the very specific objection that was aired in that discussion. He can deny it. He's got plausible deniability. Oh, I wasn't talking about Avi and Danielle. I'm gonna say bullshit. I think it's clear enough here. You guys know me. I don't ascribe intentions too easily, but I think this is a pretty obvious case. So obviously talking about Avi. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say before getting into it is for anyone who you know hasn't watched these before, the way we normally do this is Avi's the medical expert. I'm the lay person, so he goes through the idea, and I kind of act as like the dummy checker, right? Like the idea is if he can get me to understand what he's talking about, presumably some reasonable amount of the people watching who also don't have medical knowledge will be able to like learn with me and understand what's going on uh anything else or you want right. to get right over to the twitter no, that's thread it. let's let's just get right into it let's let's go to his claims let's first let's go to him dodging the debate so right so we're gonna open this twitter thread and we'll show we're gonna go through his exact tweets in a second and avi will of course you know give you replies on those tweets but before looking at his whole thread, we're just going to look at the first claim in his thread, the first post, I should say, sorry, and my attempt to get him to engage. And, you know, we'll leave you guys to determine for yourselves what you think of this kind of behavior. My opinion is made clear in the text. Uh, you know, Avi will comment if he wants to share his opinion. So I'm going to switch over to uh, the Twitter post now. So here we have okay. Jeff Nelson. And again, remember guys, I'll click this for a second. This is a whole thread. We're about to go through his full thread, but first we're gonna look at my replies to him. So he starts off, this is post one. Does a whole food plant-based low-fat diet, sorry, does whole food plant-based low-fat diet of Ornish reverse heart disease? Some oil-loving MDs say no. They argue one, absolute 10% reduction in stenosis is clinically meaningless and Two, changes in minimal luminal diameter were insignificant. Thus, Ornish diet didn't reverse CAD. Poppycock. 
So I reply, Hey, Veg Source, tag him. I hosted the stream where these claims were made. I'd be happy to host a debate. Want to come on tonight and make your case versus Avi Bit MD? That's Avi's Twitter. Uh, who your tweets refer to? No, spelled who your tweet refers to. Best way to settle these things is in a proper combo. So he replies, "Hello, ask yourself. Thanks. I don't have time to watch original vid right now, but was asked by a Twitter friend to respond to two points she mentioned. I may do a video later at some point." Thanks for asking. I said, to be clear, I'm not requesting that you reply to the original vid. I'm offering to host a debate between you and Dr. Avi on whether a vegan diet reverses CBD. Would you be up for this? Thanks for the reply. He says, thanks, I'm not interested. Not sure what the whole thing is about, but if someone believes Ornish is mischaracterizing or overstating his results, perhaps they want to debate him. I know he's debated Atkins and other critics. Dr. Bellardo knows him personally. Thanks. I said, that's very unfortunate. I would hope that when someone receives criticism from a medical expert for the information they're putting out, that they'd be willing to engage with the criticism. Don't you think it's important to be accountable? He says, if Avi is criticizing me, I don't see it. Notice he'll never, he'll never say Dr. Avi for whatever reason, I don't know why. Uh, I don't see it. I blocked him many months ago for a specific reason. In any case, no. I don't believe people need to engage with critics on social media if they don't have time, interest. Notice how he changed two things here, right? So from medical expert disagreeing with you to critics on social media and people needing to engage, right? Just people randomly. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about people who are putting out specific information that the medical expert is critical of, right? So I said, this is a red flag. It seems like you don't want to be placed in a context where someone smart and qualified, like Abby, can hold your feet to the fire. It's not just social media criticism. It's medical experts, spelled wrong, my bad, disagreeing with you and asking for a talk. He says, there are lots of medical experts out there on social media. I don't worship all doctors, and you, should, you shouldn't either. Bit of a straw man, weird fucking claim there. Uh... I could, I could give such lengthy replies to all of this, right? But it's Twitter, a horrible medium. Uh, I do try to learn from doctors I respect, but like any of us, I may choose not to spend time with some people based on past interactions. <clears throat> I said, so bottom line, your view is that it's not a moral obligation to be held accountable by qualified experts in the field for claims you make to a massive audience. Is that really how we want our community to operate? And he replies by saying, You can take comfort in knowing I check videos I make with qualified vegan MDs and dietitians before they go out. I'm sure there are keto and carnivore doctors and even some vegan doctor friends who may disagree with something. Do I morally need to make videos with them? No. So he's all over the place. I'll let Avi comment on this thread overall, but I just, I just want to point out, right? I understand that, you know, assuming Jeff's being honest here, that he's got doctors who agree with him. And we do know that there are doctors who are confused on some of these topics, or if we don't want to, you know, stack the deck by saying confused, to have differing opinions, right? But it's not about the fact that you'll engage with the doctors who agree with you. It's why won't you engage with the medical experts who disagree with you, right? My view is that, like, all I can, all I can do is say how I look at this for myself, okay? I make content mostly about philosophy. If a professional philosopher says, hey Isaac, you really fucked up in that video. You said some shit that doesn't make sense, right? I'm not gonna, like, I'm just gonna be honest with what this thing is. I'm not gonna make up excuses not to engage with the person whose criticism might be difficult to deal with, okay? I'm more, not more gonna- aptly, I'll, just interrupt, Isaac, I'll just interrupt, more aptly, say the professional philosopher laid a, a subtweeted criticism of you. So you made, a, you made a specific, very specific claim with specific numbers. And the, a professional philosopher said, basically just said, this is a like ridiculous poppycock claim. Use the same numbers right after, okay? So obvious mm -hmm. it was about you, but block you so you couldn't well, respond to it. Well, wait, that, that's, I, I, get, I get the point, but we're slightly changing the rules, right? It would be the professional philosopher makes a criticism of me, I block them, and then I subtweet oh. them. 
<laughs> which is again not something yeah. I would do, right? But but I I track what you mean. Obviously, same same fucking point, right? Um, but the the whole point is like, look, if like I'll I'll take criticism from lots of people. I don't I understand not engaging with every random. Okay, I have an audience that's not the size of Jeff's, and I already know that there are too many you know random people out there to possibly debate. But you have to make some kind of, you know, inductive inference about, like, who's going to have the good criticism. PhD philosopher has spent, you know, years and years of their life learning philosophy. If someone with that kind of training says, hey, you really fucked up, I'm, I could never, I could never feel like a fucking proper human being and sit there finding excuses to not engage. There's another philosopher who agrees with me, right? Or, you know, blocking the philosopher and, and subtweeting them, well, just calling what they said poppycock, right? Or, well, he gives an explanation, whatever. But I would, bottom line, and then we'll move on to, you know, we'll, we'll go on from here, but bottom line is just, I'm not going to blow off trained experts in the field who say I'm making an error. Okay, I'm going to hear out their criticism, and I'm not going to do it in a context where I can be evasive and craft careful text replies and then just dip out after a certain amount of replies and act like, oh, I went back and forth with them a bit, right? I will enter a legitimate context where they can hold my feet to the fire, right? Where they can ask me questions in real time, where they can press me on my views, and I can, if, if I'm not making sense on something, they'll be able to show it because my interest isn't to posture, as if I'm correct, it's mostly speaking to be uh, in line with what's actually true, to, to be putting out true information. Um, and one other thing, no, I don't think that the only legitimate form of debate is verbal debate. I think verbal debate is particularly good because it's nice and fast, it's, it's quick, you can correct someone in real time when they make an error instead of the error cascading into paragraphs of text or minutes of video before you can cut it off. The, I, and video responses, they can be thorough. There's advantages to them. Text responses also. There's a reason a lot of, you know, like like the literature on, on most topics is a big text debate, right? I, like, I, I get it. But there's a certain frustration engaging in that kind of medium with someone who's either not tracking or who's operating in bad faith. It's just... You know, it's, it's brutal to sit there dealing with, like, five minutes of someone's video m not understanding your point, missing the point, or, like, talking past you in some way or another, where in a real conversation, you could have just stopped them within the first few words and say, wait, that's not quite what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Sorry, can you reply to that? So, yeah, I mean, there's just, if, if you had some crazy reason to think Avi's a bad actor or some shit like this, you know, fair enough, but that's obviously not the case. He has a very clean debate record. He's qualified. You should be willing to deal with the criticism, and the fact that you're not is a huge red flag. Avi, do you have anything to say about this uh, thread, or do you want to go over to uh, his main thread? Yeah, I, I, I'll just, I mean, the point is just that, look, Jeff, it's, this is the specific argument I made. Um, you're obviously subtweeting me um, while I'm blocked and can't respond. Give me a chance to respond. Let's let's have a talk. Let's engage. But in the meantime, I'll go. Th I have no problem going through your tweet and responding to your claims. And hopefully, uh, we won't be making video responses to each other. Hopefully, we'll be in a discussion with each other. All right. Let's let's go into his uh, his specific claims. All righty. Here we go. Um, so, what do you want to do? You want to do? I read it, and you yeah. cut me off when you want to comment. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I can read it too. I have, I have. Okay, well, you, you it, just take so. over then. That's fine. Yeah. So he starts off. Uh, he says, "Does a whole food, plant based, low fat diet of Ornish reverse heart disease?" Some oil loving MDs say no. So look at the well poisoning already. Oil loving MDs. So again, I don't know where he's getting oil loving MDs from. Um, we don't promote oil as a superfood. Um, we're not saying we should, any people should guzzle oil all the time or any, even any of the time. Um, we're just saying that oil in moderate amounts doesn't kill you and it doesn't lead to negative outcomes. That's all. And there's, there's just no data for that. So anyway, uh, so they argue um, one, absolute 10% reduction of stenosis is clinically meaningless. 
Well, no, actually, that was the threshold for it being clinically meaningful. That's not our, the position. So if you actually watch this in full, you would see that the 10% reduction of stenosis is one of the criteria for clinically relevant regression. Okay, so I'm not saying that 10% reduction of stenosis is clinically meaningless. Actually, it's the opposite. So that's a straw man. And two, changes in minimal luminal diameter were insignificant. So it actually, that's not exactly quite right either. So changes in minimal luminal diameter, it's true, they were insignificant. They weren't statistically significant. But they actually weren't, even the effect size in the Orner study wasn't changed. It was sitting on the zero. It was 0 0.001 at five years. Thus, the Ornish diet didn't reverse uh, CAD, poppycock. He continues, this is not a new argument. Friedkin's response to the, uh, to the same was always true, but that doesn't mean the diet isn't powerful. We're never saying the diet wasn't powerful. We're saying the diet can help people. Um, reversal, quote unquote, on, in quotes, is sexy, but what this diet does not stabilize, uh, but what this diet does is stabilize plaques so they don't rupture. The actual cause of most heart attacks. Well, again, if you watch the video, Jeff, this is what we talked about. We talked about the fact that the disease didn't progress. This is literally what we were saying. He continues, it's not 90% blockages of hard plaques, but soft plaques that rupture, forms clot and blockage causing most heart attacks. This can happen even in arteries with less than 40% blockage. Ornish and Essie remove olive oil. Of course, olive, I, to say, I don't know why. It's so weird. Like he always has to include olive oil. Um, but anyway, um, remove olive oil, et cetera, change the environment and prevent future MI and strokes. So again, fine, that's tangential to anything that was said. That doesn't mean it reverses CAD. Okay, so then he says, from a Medicare document, note the impact of Ornish diet on plaque stability. The authors noted uh, significant improvements in the following parameters, BMI, LDLC, um, triglycerides, and then they have, so they also improved on blood glucose. Other changes noted by authors include significant improvement in oxidative stress as measured by serum myeloperoxidase or MPO, as well as significant changes in inflammatory proteins, CRP, and MMP9. Okay, that's all fine and good. Again, plaque, st plaque stability, disease, stopping the disease progression. No disagreement there, Jeff. We agree that a, it was meaningful that the disease did not progress in the Ornish study. Sure. The point is, the actual debate proposition was, does the vegan diet or the whole foods plant-based no oil diet Re reversed CBD? And the answer is to a clinically meaningful degree, there's no evidence for that. I'm sure Ornish has similar uh, Medicare documents, see paper on stabilization of plaque progression on MI and stro stroke progression. Um, again, that, um, again, Jeff, I need to see data for regression. That's what I'm looking for. That's what this is about. Now, he finally talks about it, uh, regards whether CV, regardless of whether CBD was reversed or stabilized or what degree of each one, SC Ornish Pritkin have better outcomes and beat the PrediMed Lyon Mediterranean diet for reversal and much better outcomes than standard cardiology care. Okay, so here's where the incredibly misleading claim comes in. So what he wants to say, and again, this isn't, this is tangential to the debate we have. And even if this, all of this was true, if all of this was true, it still wouldn't have any relevance on the debate proposition, which is, does it reverse CVD? Does it reverse atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease? The answer is still no. But this gets into a really, and it's not just Jeff Nelson that does this. It's even, unfortunately, um, some of Dr. Esselstyn's presentations have this misleading form of evidence and representation of the data, and we'll get into that. So actually, let's get into it now. So let's go to why, how he makes that case that the events of the Esselstyn study 
or the Ornish study are far superior than the events in other interventions, like the such as the Lyon um, diet heart trial. Is this the video you want? This is the video, yeah. Uh, okay, I have got it open on full screen. Uh, just play whenever. All right, and it's loaded at ten fifty. Um. I uh, yeah, can't be. see, okay. but... We'll see. We'll find out. ...content Let's and coronary plaque. Oh, yeah, good. Studies using higher-fat diets, notably a Mediterranean diet in the Lyon Diet Heart Study, have shown much the same reduction in heart attacks and death. So Dr. Katz is claiming that the Lyon Diet Heart Study showed, quote, much the same reduction in heart attacks and death as the Ornish and Esselstyn diets. Is he correct? No, he's not. Now, this is sort of comparing apples to oranges when Dr. Katz is comparing one type of study, the Lyon, to studies like Dr. Esselstyn's and Dr. Ornish's. In the Lyon, they took six... This is the irony. Like, just, just put a little flag there. He's accusing Dr. Katz of comparing apples to oranges. So just wait. Lyon, they took 600 people who had had a heart attack. Half got the American Heart Association Step 1 Prudent Diet. The other got the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet had better outcomes for heart disease versus those on the AHA diet. Here's figure three from the Lyon study. This experimental group is the Mediterranean diet, and this is the control. It's the standard AHA diet. And this line represents how many people in each group had no major cardiac events as time went forward. How many were free of having a heart attack or a stroke, angina, trips to the emergency room, and so on. By year five, the control group here, it looks like about 58% of people in the control group didn't have any further heart problems. So that means 42% of the people in the control group did have a recurrence of heart problems. People eating the Mediterranean diet, they did better. And by year five, about 75% had not had any. Look how he describes this. Set, I, just to put another flag, 75% free of heart problems. It, basically, he's, he's saying that it, this percentage thing over here, that 25% it, 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 of them had heart problems. That's indicative of like having a problem. All right, so we'll get into all of this, all of the details. There's a whole lot already, but we, let's go through the whole thing and then we'll, we'll take it apart. A major cardio. So about 25% of the people following the Mediterranean diet did have a recurrence of heart problems within five years. So obviously, the Mediterranean diet was better than the AHA diet. Now let's compare this to Dr. Esselstyn's diet. This study is where Dr. Esselstyn's team followed 198 consecutive patients who went on his low-fat, no-oil diet. 177 of the participants were adherent, meaning they followed the diet. And at the end of almost four years, there was only 0.6% rate of heart attack, stroke, or death. There was one person out of 177 following Dr. Esselstyn's diet who had a problem, an individual who had a small stroke. So the Lyon study, we know people were following the Mediterranean diet, had a 25% recurrence of cardiac problems. One in four people experienced a serious problem. But the low-fat plant-based diet, less than 1%, less than 1 in 100 people had a problem. So that's 25% of people eating a Mediterranean diet had a serious heart event, but less than 1% of the people eating the low-fat plant-based diet had a problem. How many major cardiovascular... And, un and unfortunately, this dishonest misrepresentation of the data is even presented in Dr. Esselstyn's um, presentations himself. And you'll see that here. Prevents death heart attack and stroke. Here is the Mediterranean Lyon diet heart study, 25%. Look over here, treating the cause. Here we are, six tenths of a percent, over a 30 fold difference. What is the difference? Why can't everybody do that? All we're doing that's different, we're treating the causation of the illness. Okay. The Esselstyn diet is more than 25 times lower in serious heart recurrence compared to the Lyon. So when Dr. Katz wrote higher fat diet. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the Lyon diet heart study. We're going to go through the Esselstyn study. We're going to go through the claims, and then we're going to watch this again and see just how many dis... Well, I, I don't want to describe intent, but just how much misrepresentation this really sketchy misrepresentation this is, um, is going on here. So let's do that. So okay. let's first we'll start like with the characteristics. 
of the Mediterranean uh, diet in the Leon Diet Heart Study. So the, what I want you to pull up, I want you to pull up the Mediterranean first, uh, alpha link. linoleic. Stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. All right, I got so that. So what? Up. Yeah. So they recruited about six hundred patients, and they randomized about three hundred patients to each arm. So the experimental arm or the control group. Control group being the prudent AHA diet, and the experimental group being the Mediterranean diet. Now, what was actually different about the diets? If you scroll to the if you scroll to table five, and you, you have it up, you have it up on screen for for all the viewers. Uh, I do, but I couldn't okay, keyword cool. search table five. Oh wait, is this just the abstract? One second. What what have you sent me? Oh oh oh, sorry. Let's. I'll give you the sci-hub link. No 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 worries. Um, sure. Here you go. Here it's in the DM. Or I can okay. give you a PDF too if you want. Or... Uh, I have the Sci-Hub one open. We get to you know, wave at the Sci-Hub girl. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> why is this not opening? Oh, it's it's doing that uh, weird shit with my VPN. Um, oh, really? Okay, I can give you the PDF. No worries. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Tell me that, sure. Okay, okay. So here's the characteristics. So if you pull that PDF up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just give me a sec, I'll drag it over. All right, uh, I have that open. So we want table five. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we've got uh, table five. Okay, so we'll start off with table five. So we'll, And we'll go into the macronutrient breakdown. We'll go over to the percentage of fat, how much oil they had, et cetera, et cetera. But first, I just w with dietary patterns, like what were the differences in the control group and the experimental group? So at least what were the statistically significant differences? So first off, um, they ate more bread. The experiment, the people on the Mediterranean diet ate more bread than those in the control group. Next, um, le less delicatessens. Other mm -hmm. than that, they ate le uh, more, sorry, they ate uh, less butter and cream and mm -hmm. more margarine. So they basically replaced margarine. Well, I don't want to use the word replace, but instead of eating, yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah. So instead of eating uh, butter and cream, they ate margarine. Margarines are uh, refined vegetable oil, uh, butter replacements. Mm -hmm. Um, and they both, there wasn't any difference in oil consumption or fish consumption. They both consumed oil. Uh, on top of the margarine and in the experimental group. So those are the big things that stood out in terms of differences. Um, and uh, meat, oh yes, that's the other one. Yeah, they ate less meat. So mm -hmm. less meat, more bread, less delicatessen, more margarine, less butter, and less cream. That was mm -hmm. the experimental difference in the diet for the Mediterranean diet compared to the AHA diet. Sure. Let's, go to, um, let's go to table three. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. got it. Um, and so this is the percentage of uh, fat in the in the diet. Uh, they were they were pretty similar in the control and the experimental. So thirty percent, thirty percent of the experimental, thirty two point seven percent in the control. At uh, four year one to four years follow up. Um, mm -hmm. So now. Some people may look at 30% and be like, that's low fat. Some people will look at 30%, all depends on relative to who you are, will say that's high fat. I can tell you that compa that relative to um, Ornish and Esselstein, that is high fat. Um, in fact, 15% calories from fat may be high fat for Ornish and Esselstein. They have a very low fat, fat diet. They, I, mean, I think there's a limit on the amount of nuts you're allowed to eat even. It's, it's pretty, pretty uh, it's pretty excessively low fat. Okay, so th so that's the basics. Uh, and then they followed them out. So then we're going to go to the results. So I'm going to send you another PDF for that. So these are the results of the study. Okay, so open that one. All right. All right, so this is the Mediterranean diet, traditional risk factors, and rate of cardiovascular complications after myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. And then you see, I want you to just take a look at 
um, figure one, figure two, and we're going to go into these in detail. Figure one, figure two, and figure three. Um, okay, wait a second. We're not talking about tables. We're talking about figures, right? Yes, oh, wait, figure. I'll, I'll just search it. Figure one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I got figure one and figure two on screen. Yeah. I recognize okay, cool. this from the video. Yeah. So, yeah. So you'll notice, actually, that there's multiple of them. So you'll notice, so there's figure one, figure two, and figure three. So he picked figure three. That's important, mm -hmm. right? So do you see see how they're different? Uh, I'm just looking at them. So I see figure yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course they're different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. This is important. This is a so what I'll introduce to you is a concept called the composite outcome. Okay. So you can follow an experimental group and a control group over time, which is what this graph represents, the the percent without events. And obviously as you go through time, that number, the percent without events will decrease. Sure. Theoretically, if you continued, eventually everyone would be at zero mm -hmm. because everyone dies at some point. Mm -hmm. So everyone eventually will have an event. Well, wait, by so event, we mean, an, we mean, uh, obviously here we're talking about like a heart event, right? So, I mean, no, 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 any, no, 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 this is, it's not, no, it's, it's, we'll get into that. Not necessarily. This is so, just any health event at all? It depends. It depends on which figure. Oh, so, okay. Okay. That's what we're going to talk about with composite outcomes. So here's an important question. When you're comparing studies, and you're comparing the percent without event, okay? The important question you have to ask yourself, one of the important questions you have to ask yourself is, is what is considered an event the same thing that's being compared, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, if one study is only looking at cardiac events, this is, just, this is not the argument I'm making, this is just hypothetical. So if one mm -hmm. study is just looking at cardiac events, and another study is looking at all events. Yeah. It wouldn't be fair to com just compare those two things. No. One, from one group to another group, it, obviously, it, yeah. because it, it would be apples to oranges. Yeah, it's apples, apples mm. to oranges, exactly. So let's go through what constitute what the what made up the events in these different. Should we figures. clear? Should we clear that up for people? Because like maybe they won't understand that. Like if you're looking at like. I don't know, say that you do a comparison of like event types one, two, and three versus event type one, instead of just comparing like event type one versus event type one on two different mm -hmm. diets, right? You could artificially get the impression if you just put like, you know, say you just put events on the y axis or something, you could artificially get the impression that uh, the diet where you're counting for three different event types is worse than it is right where if you actually compared like with like you would not count right. event type two or three you would just count event type one and it might come out looking better so the idea is just or the other way around if you were to measure the other diet and count event types two and three it might come out looking worse right so it's just it's just a like with like thing there's presumably not much else to right. it than that there's another like with like thing that I want to bring attention to. And we're going to go back to this study, but I want you to go to the Asselstein study and I'm going to post that as a PDF here just for consistency sake um, to keep thing, everything in PDF. I also, I noticed Veg Source just started following me. Um, so Jeff, I uh, presume you're <laughs> watching. Um, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't have any personal, well, I mean, Avi might have a personal problem with you. I don't really know you. You're welcome to come on stream. I, just, I have my Twitter open. You just send me a message if you want to come on here and defend your point of view. Uh, sorry, continue, Avi. Yeah, Jeff, again, if you're watching this, come on, let's have a discussion. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, if not, it's a shame. I mean, we, it, we, anyway, we'll, we'll just continue. We'll respond to your points. But if at any point you want to come on um, and have a discussion, come on. Yep, we're just a Twitter message okay. away. We're using Zoom, so it's very easy to bring you in here. All right. So if you look at the, so you have the Esselstyn paper pulled up? 
Um, wait, what do you want me to... Uh, right now I have figure two and three from, um... Yep, what yep. we were just looking at, yeah. Just, just have it, just, yeah, just have it saved over there and just pull the SLC and PDF up. I just sent that to you in, uh, in a, in a DM. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. I've got that open, too. Okay. And I want you to look at, let's look at the figure that he quoted. So do you see, um, in results in the, uh, first page? You see where it says uh, results? I see results, yeah. Okay. okay. You want me to just read So it this? says of of 198 patients with CVD, 177 or 89% were adherent. Major cardiac events judged to be recurrent disease totaled one stroke in the adherent cardiovascular participant participants. A recurrent event rate of 0.6%, significantly less than reported by other studies of plant-based nutrition therapy. 13 of 21 or 62 percent of non here participants experience adverse events. So notice the the wording here. Okay, it's subtle. You a lot you may have missed it, but I I zero, feel like I zero... see the thing you're gonna try to point out here. But yeah, yeah go yeah. ahead. So that figure 0 0.6 percent. That's mm -hmm. a major cardiac event judged mm -hmm. to be recurrent disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not the amount of major cardiac events that happen. Right. Nor, yeah, and nor, and, and there's another problem. Nor, nor is it the amount of events that happened, nor is it the amount of deaths that happened. Because there were deaths that happened, there were events that happened. Um, so a lot more happened than that 0.6%. Yeah, this is a subgroup of the total group of cardiac events. It's a, it, and it's even a further subgroup because oh, what this study did this study is not a randomized study. This study wrote right here, it's an intervention. Everyone in this study was an experiment, was, was in the experimental group. Everyone in the study had uh, the intention to treat was, was for them. This wasn't a, they didn't randomize people to a control group and like the other study and randomize people to the experimental group. What they did here, just so everyone is clear on the methodology, they compared the adherent people, the people who are adherent to the diet with the people who are less or not adherent to the diet. Okay. Are you following? Yep, I'm just some some guy in chat saying Jeff Nelson <laughs> doesn't run from controversy. He runs towards it. Um, I said, unless that involves defending his view from Avi, because he doesn't want to run towards this controversy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. <yeah. laughs> what a muckracker. Okay. So, um, yeah, sorry, say that again. Yeah, so here's the thing. So in this methodology, there wasn't randomization. So they didn't, and there was, they weren't, they didn't randomize people to a control group and randomize them to an experiment group, like in the Leon Diet Heart Study. Mm -hmm. What they did was, so everyone was in the exper effective experimental group. It's just some people were adherent to the experimental group and some people were not adherent to the experimental group. Right. You following? Yeah. Now, what they're doing here is they're subgrouping the map. They're saying, okay, the people who are not adherent, we're going to subgroup them out. Mm -hmm. And then of the people who were adherent, we're going to subgroup out the events judged to be recurrent disease. Right. So it's a subgroup of a subgroup. Right. So the initial group is people on the intervention. The next mm -hmm. group, the next subgrouping is people who adhered and didn't adhere. And then the further subgrouping is people who had an event that was judged to be, um, what was the terminology they used? Um, recurrent disease, judged to be recurrent Yeah, judged disease. to be recurrent disease. And is that, um, yeah, in the adherent patients, right? So it's like you have the yeah. total, then you have the adherent, mm -hmm. then you have the adherent who, um, the adherents who uh, had an event that was judged to be um, recurrent mm -hmm. disease okay yeah that's that's right. clear enough that's right gotcha. sure yeah i don't know where now, you're going with you it wanted... but yeah so the well the point is there's a couple of ways you can do an apples to apples comparison and it still wouldn't be a very good apples to apples comparison because they're different studies different populations but if you wanted to do an apples to apples comparison what you would do is you would say okay of the mediterranean diet group in the leon diet heart study what percent what what subgroup of them were adherent 
Right. And of that adherence subgroup, what percent of events were judged to be recurrent disease? Of course. Yeah, obviously. That would be an apples to apples comparison. Wait, let me read That's this That's not now. what he did. One, yeah. one second. Let me, let me just make sure I'm tracking all this. Results of the 198 patients with CVD, 177 were adherent. Major cardiac events judged to be recurrent disease totaled one stroke in the adherent cardiovascular participants. Our current event rate of 0.6%, significantly less than reported by other studies of plant-based nutrition therapy, 13 of 21, um, 62% non-adherent participants experienced adverse events. See, so it's, I mean, I, we'd have to know exactly what studies he's citing there, but I, I let me repeat your point to you and you tell me if I'm understanding the point. Yeah. So the point is, if, let me make sure I'm getting the studies right. This is the Esselstyn study we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, so this is the Esselstyn if, study. Right, so if what Esselstyn is doing is he's getting this really low figure, this 0.6%, by taking the initial group, chopping it into adherent and non-adherent, then chopping adherent into uh, adherent with um, a event judged to be recurrent disease, then to compare that figure, which is the 6%, in an apples-to-apples -apples way with some other study, mm -hmm. He wouldn't be able to compare it to another study that just looks at, for example, overall events for all participants or something like this. He would, you'd have to take overall the events for participants in the in the experimental diet because everyone yes, in, the exp in the Esselstyn study, yeah, yeah, or even even yeah. overall adherent um, uh, right. uh, people in the um, experimental group, right? Like he'd have to add the further subgrouping as well mm -hmm. which is about the judged to be um judged to be recurrent uh criteria so what right. you could do if you want to go apples to apples there's two directions you can move in you can with the esselst and mm -hmm. you correct me whenever i make an error here with the esselstyn study you could uh move out from this scoped in picture you could zoom out zoom out you know, two subgroups and talk about just like general event occurrence in the experimental group and then compare that to general mm -hmm. event occurrence in the experimental group on some other study. Or you could take the other study and zoom in, right? So it's uh, yes. where, and zooming in there, just to be precise, if anyone's not following the language, that would be zooming into the subgroup of the experimental group who are adherent and then further zooming in among the adherent people in the experimental group to those judged to have an event that's, um, uh, taken to be recurrent disease so the big picture here is if you want to do an apples to apples comparison you have two choices you can either zoom out on the Esselstyn study or you can zoom in on the study that's uh being compared that's the idea that's right gotcha that's, that's the idea loud exactly. and clear. sure <clears throat> okay good and so i just want to point out just and you have you appreciate the the dishonest well i don't want to i i, I <laughs> run to use the word dishonest here because it's such a misrepresentation of the data let's just call it, it that it's, it's just a, i appreciate yeah. the misrepresentation now I, i'll add one thing which is i would have to go back and look at what the other study is and see can we in fact do that and and see what their yeah, group sure. was so met, yeah. it was mediterranean diet now also another further question is it's got a bit of plausible deniability here because um, he he just refers to other studies when making this you know presumably non apples to apples comparison. So we don't know exactly what he's referring to, but I mean I guess well we no just... we do it's in the video it's in his presentation so let's watch it again right I'll, I'll wait play sorry it. sorry before we talk about uh, before we talk about Jeff Nelson I was talking about Esselstyn right there not not Nelson I'm talking no about... it's in his video too no it's in his video too oh so just just to be clear. Before, yeah. before we I'll go play, to that. Let me play it again. Okay, before we do it, can we go to the Mediterranean thing though? Because I just wanna make yeah, sure I'm sure. understanding this. So sure. so firstly, just to be clear, Esselstyn is on record making this comparison to other studies where he cites this 0.6% figure and he specifies when he's talking about other studies that he's talking about, for example, the Lyon study. Leon, Leon uh, Diet Heart study, yeah. Leon, okay, so now the only question it, just for me to get the full picture here is if we go over to that and that's this mediterranean diet traditional yeah final mm -hmm. report of the leone um and i'm on the final report part i don't know which i should be looking at here but i'm so now all i want yeah to, yeah final what report, i want final report yeah so now what i want to see is just 
what they're counting here because they're not looking at a fucking subgroup of a subgroup right like just sh where what figure no. am i looking for here where it'll so if you here's what you if you want everything broken down table one okay cumulative survival without non-fatal that's double negative not, that's not weird. not not figure table table one. Oh, table one okay wait but um Sorry, do I want to be in uh, Mediterranean diet, traditional risk factors, and the rate of cardiovascular, or do I want to be in this first Mediterranean one? diet, traditional risk factors, and rate of cardiovascular okay. complications after myocardial infarction. Okay, table one. Um, yep, so I'm yeah. at table one. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, endpoints in the two groups, two groups being experimental and control, mm -hmm. right? Is that what we're talking about yep. here? And experimental yep. is obviously Mediterranean, and the other. What does AHA stand yep. for? Is that some standard thing or? Um, American Heart Association. A, A, oh, okay, gotcha. Nice. <laughs> Shows how much I know about health. Um, but that's why I do the layman check. Um, okay, so um, endpoints in the two groups and risk factors for the three composite outcomes calculated with mm. the Cox uh, proportional Cox, hazards Cox model. Cox proportional hazards uh, model. One second. That so, just, yeah, so, I, I have to get uh, that sentence through my head. Just one sec. You're going sure, to test sure, sure. me. Okay. Endpoints in the two groups and risk factors for the three composite outcomes. So I, we can talk about the model if it's relevant, but the three composite outcomes are what that we're looking for here? Okay. So composite, there were three composite outcomes. So composite outcome number one was the number of, uh, so composite outcome number one was the cumulative survival without non-fatal myocardial infarction um, among the experimental group uh, versus the control. So those, so survival, which means you didn't die of a cardiac death. Mm -hmm. um, so composite outcome one and, and or have a, a non-fatal uh, uh, AMI. Uh, what is that? What's AMI? Not acute myocardial infarction. Gotcha. So you didn't die of a cardiac death and you didn't have um, a non-fatal acute myocardial infarction. Help me out with this, Avi. I'm I'm getting lost in all yeah. the data. What I'm trying to understand is I'm trying to mm -hmm. just fully appreciate why it's not apples to apples. I understand conceptually why sure. it wouldn't be. I get I get that on a conceptual mm -hmm. level, we're we're saying in the Esselstyn study we've zoomed into a subgroup of a subgroup. Mm -hmm. I won't bother restating what those groups are, and here mm -hmm. we haven't. I just want to yeah. look at this and understand why we haven't zoomed in, where what it's what we're getting the, so, the number for. Also, Esselstyn study, what's yeah, yeah. the number cited there? Did they significantly less? He didn't cite a number there, okay. Um, Zero point, yeah, well, he did. He, he, he cited his point six, right? But he didn't, he well, didn't he cite. Well, he also, no, he cited, no, he did. He oh, did, really? in, in his video, he did. Yes, he did, here it is. Wait, you're talking Let's about Jeff now. Video. You're talking about Jeff, right? I'm talking about both. I'm talking about both. Okay, all right, Jeff you really, okay. Esselstyn. Okay, we're going video. Let's go to the video. I'm at the video. Oh, what? what? <laughs> it's it's on. Sorry, it's on the screen. I literally just went to the uh, video. Serious the heart car. event, yeah. but less than one percent of the people. Okay, so they're sighting. Right. 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 right? They're right. sighting. Right. That's yeah. the comparison they're claiming. Okay. okay. And and this is going to be a, yeah. Go ahead. Where's the now? Just show me the twenty-five on the on the um yeah. on the Mediterranean. Yeah, That's I wanted what I to show you the eating the a low-fat yeah, plant-based yeah, yeah. diet had a problem. Yeah. How many? Major cardiovascular see? events, death, yeah, yeah, heart yeah. attack, and it's stroke. Clear. I see it. Here's yep. the Mediterranean he, he Leone diet heart completely. study, 25%. There, yep, yeah. Look yep. over He's here. On, clearly on Treating record. Okay. To yep, sorry. Yeah, I, just, I, like, comparing it. I like to make sure I'm totally tracking these things. So, yeah, there's absolutely no doubt both Esselstyn and VegSource are making a comparison of the 0.6, which is looking at the subgroup of the subgroup to the 25. And now I just want to understand what where that 25 is coming from. Can you just help me with that? That's uh, yeah. that, that's what I'm sure, sure. looking at here. So here's what, he, so he, it's actually a, an eyeball figure. So I'll show you where, he's, I'll show you exactly where it's coming from. So let's go back because he, mm -hmm. here's where it's coming from. So diet, and this is the control, right it's the standard AHA diet. And this line represents how many people in each group had no major cardiac events as time went forward. Okay. How many were free of having a heart attack or a stroke, angina, trips to the emergency room, and so on. By year five, the control group here, it looks like about 58% of people in the... 
So he's not calculating these things. He's eyeballing it, which is okay, fine. Sure. But like, just to, just, I'm just giving you an idea. Of Control where group going. didn't yeah, have. Yeah, we're, any we're not suggesting part. that the eyeballing is is the problem. Yeah. The the problem is the and non apples to apples. I, I the, right. it looks like he eyeballed it well enough to me. That looks like around 58. Yeah. That's problem. fine. So that means 42 yes. percent. Okay, so one second. Yeah, people in and control. So okay, so it's figure three. I just want to get figure three. Just mm -hmm. give me a second here. So Mediterranean diet, figure three. So cumulative survival without non fatal infarction, without major secondary endpoints, and without minor secondary endpoints. So I'm just trying to appreciate why that's different than um the, the Esselstyn. So we haven't we're not looking Okay, first of yeah, all Yeah, so Okay, so we are looking at the experimental group, so we're mm -hmm. doing we're doing that in both cases. So that that part is okay. apples out. Now, the next subgrouping we want to go down to is adherent. Are we looking at just adherent people here? In so uh, no, so that's the thing. So they did not stratify uh, for adherence. Okay, so, so that's... everyone, yeah, everyone in this Leon, all that that twenty that twenty five percent figure comes from the combination of both the adherent and non-adherent no matter okay. how adherent they were they yeah. were lumped together that that sinks the point right there so that's that's enough but then secondarily the, the further um the further yeah. subgrouping that's not counted in here also because we're not correct in, in addition we're just this is looking more gent like i mean i don't know exactly what this language is but it's not looking at judged to be um what, what was the language? Judged to be recursive or, or repeated or something? Or what, what was the language they used? We can we can go find it, whatever. Uh, judged it was, to be recurrent. Uh, the language... Yeah, yeah I, judged, I to, be judged recurrent, to be recurrent, please. Yeah, so, so firstly, we're not zooming in to um, the adherent, uh, the adherent uh, part of the experimental group. And secondly, we're not zooming in within the adherent part of the experimental group to those whose event was determined to be uh recurrent uh okay so that's, right. that's that's loud and clear yeah it's just not apples to apples that destroys the point um unless there's something that <laughs> that we're insanely missing here that that is just going to shoot the point down completely yeah so, yeah it's not apples to apples absolutely i i track what you're saying i get it i agree right now if we were now i did a little bit of trying to make it apples to apples um Oh really? There's okay. a there's a yeah I did I did. Um, there's a minor there is a minor point to make here. Um, there there's one other uh, there there are several other actually um, major disanalogies between the two studies. So what one disanalogy is that there was a slightly longer follow up time in the Leon diet heart study. So remember when I said that if you follow people long enough, yeah, more chance of finding an event. Can, yeah. Yeah. So there were there was a slightly longer follow up time on average in the Leone compared to the uh, the Esselstyn study. Not a big deal. Not the biggest uh, differences. You can probably correct for that, but for whatever it's worth. Now the big things are in favor of Esselstyn. The average age was older. So if you're older, you're more likely to die. However, in the Leone diet heart study there were far more smokers. In fact, 75% of the participants were smokers and 0% right. of the participants in the Esselstyn study were smokers. Which mm -hmm. one wins out? I don't know. But for By which one you mean are... out, you mean age versus smoking? Like who's at, yeah. who's at higher yeah. risk? This if two groups, yeah. this much of them are old in group A versus this much of them are smokers yeah. in group B. Yeah, okay. It's like a 60, you compare a 60 year old to a 50 year old, but the 50 year old is a smoker and the 60 year old is not, who has like a, a greater five year risk. But see, sometimes, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes people get, get lost when they hear something like that because they go, well, if you just don't know, then like you don't know it's wrong. It's like, yeah, but that's not the point Avi's making, right? You, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're just making the point that that muddies the waters in a way that just we're, we're not clear on what it would look like if it were unmuddied. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, now I did try to, so what I did was I did take the events. I took events that were tracked in both cases. Um, Cause the other, so the other thing you want to make sure is you want to, so I'll just tell you what, so a composite outcome is just multiple different events that are put together as a cumulative event rate. 
are, are, are you tracking that? So let's uh, say you yeah. have, yeah, yeah. So, and then you can have different composite outcomes. So composite outcome number one was the cardiac deaths and the heart attacks. Composite outcome number two was what everything composite outcome number one was and other stuff like uh, periprocedural infarction, unstable angina, heart failure, stroke, pulmonary embolism. So those, all of those events were added to composite outcome number one. Mm -hmm. And composite outcome number three was all of composite outcome number two plus stable angina, elective myocardial revascularization, post PTCA restenosis, thrombophobitis. So those were outcomes in addition to outcome two that were added to make a composite outcome three. So it's when you have a bunch of different events that are all added together, summated to get you a composite. Uh, so these are all outcomes, different types of outcomes. You're summating them together to get a composite outcome. Right, and the, the, yeah, and the takeaway people should be getting here is the more things that are part of the composite outcome, the higher the percentage of people who are going to have an event. Right. Yeah. That's right. So when you, if you are actually trying, and again, like there's so many problems with just taking a study, like a, an intervention, one study to another study, the population's different. Like there's so many differences, but if you're going to try to make a fair comparison, what you want to do is you want to try to number, you want to try to make sure you are doing an apples to apples with the adherence. So if, if you don't have data on the stratification of adherence in the Mediterranean diet, you just have to like, you're not gonna have, be able to zoom in on the Mediterranean diet. The only way you're gonna be able to do it is zoom out, right? So you have mm -hmm. to zoom out in both the Esselstyn and the Mediterranean diet. Uh, and also we don't have, we don't, none of the outcomes are judged to be recurrent disease. You're gonna have to zoom out on that too. So we're gonna have to zoom out on both. Mm -hmm. You can't zoom in on both because it's just not there. Right. So. Here is, um, and I'll just screenshot right now, um, and I'll send you the, the screenshot in DMs. Sure. So I did a back of the envelope calculation on the rates, and you can show this to uh, the audience. So this is the percentage. Um, let's rates see. That I got. Mm -hmm. Open link. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, I've got it up here. I probably need to minimize this so you're not overlapping on it. Um, okay, so this yeah. is, okay, so we got Lion, we got or Leon, Esselstyn, Leon. and then Leon. And and this What's... is an adjustment, the Leon, yeah, the Leon follow-up uh, standardized. So that's basically, I, I adjusted the numbers to the st to standardize the fo average follow-up time. So if you want, if you cared about that, oh. I showed that data as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, with Leon, now I'm not saying that the, to whatever degree you think that's a valid thing to do, uh, I listed it there. If you don't, you can just look at the, the other numbers. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so the percentage uh, of, in terms of all cause, ACM is all cause mortality. Uh, you got 5.2% with Leon, 3.5 with Esselstyn. Mm -hmm. Cardiovascular uh, CBD deaths, um, so heart related deaths, 2.2% with Leon. And with Esselstyn, it depends. It could be 1% or 1.5%, depending on how you define a cardiovascular CVD death. Um, there was a pulmonary embolism-related uh, death. Some people would consider that a CVD-related death. Some people would not. Mm -hmm. I don't really care. So it's 1 or 1.5. Either way, very similar. Mm -hmm. How many got a heart attack? Um, in Lyon, uh, the experimental group, a 3%. In Esselstyn, it's pro some. It's probably four percent. It's probably four percent, but we don't know for sure because it's unclear, and we can go into why. Um, okay. So if you, so if you go to the Esselstyn study. Yeah. No. Sorry, Avi. I need to. I need to zoom mm -hmm. out to the big picture here for a sec. So I'm getting. I'm getting lost sure. with what. What the overall. So. We're, we're just going through a range of claims that Jeff has made in this oil video and dealing with those. That is, that is the idea here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if there was some, some bigger like, like meta point or something. Well, that, the, that the claim, me. yeah, the, the claim we're dealing with here is just that 
he's trying to say that um yeah the the this is besides the whole debate proposition thing this is the claim that the Esselstyn study and Ornish study just blows this out of the water, blows the other studies uh, the, that have oil in it or that have uh, uh, more than like their insanely low degree of fat in it, just out of the, out of the water. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's continue. Sorry to get hung up there. So yeah, I'm at the Esselstyn study. So what do we want in here? Sure. Yeah, so let's look in the Esselstyn study. Let's look at uh, table two. Um, one second. Oh, wait a sec. Uh, table two. Um, yeah. Okay. Wait, where the did I just miss table two? One second. Um, it's on. Wait, that's it's labeled table page three sixty one. Um. Oh, here we go. Yeah, table two. I got it. Yeah. So you'll see the outcomes. So these are the outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the left hand side, you have adherent and on the right hand side, you have non adherent. Mm -hmm. But remember, everyone is part of the experimental, you have to zoom out. So you have to combine yeah. all of this, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice that they, they don't say they only there's only one instance where they actually say there was an MI and that's the patient stop clopidogrel on PCP recommendation resulting in stent closure and MI in the adherent group. Now, there are other, there are reasons we would suspect other patients had an MI here, um, especially in the non-adherent group. If you look at disease under disease progression, they say PCI with stent and cabbage, uh, that's a bypass. And uh, PCI is, um, uh, it's when they do a cath catheterization. And they put and with stents, and they put a stent in one of the coronary arteries. Now, they don't have to have a heart attack to do that, um, but they're not specifying if it was due to a heart attack or not. They're just saying it was due to disease progression. Um, mm. They're being vague about it. We don't know for sure. Um, so we, we don't know what elicit uh, elicit the. Um, the stent stents being put in due to disease progression. Like, why did the patient have a stent put in? Did they get a heart? Did they present with chest pain? Have it uh, have the troponin leaking, and then they were caffeinated? That's what they found. Um, and that why did they get a bypass? Is that what they found? So we we don't really know. Um, so there's a, I put a range in because um, they didn't they weren't clear enough about it. So sure. with heart attacks, if we go back to that spreadsheet, it's zero. It could be anywhere from zero point five to four percent. For strokes, this is where the Leone actually did better than Esselstyn. Um, zero, well, I shouldn't even say better. I don't think anything, any, all of these things are spurious and there's, I don't think anything here is really significant, but stroke zero, Esselstyn two, um, mm -hmm. 2%. Heart failure, uh, Leone 2.2%, Esselstyn 0.5% with a question mark, because if we go back to Esselstyn, there was one patient with a heart transplant. That's almost certainly, I'm highly likely that that's due to heart failure. Um, not necessarily, it doesn't have, the heart transplant doesn't necessarily have to be due to heart failure, but highly likely uh, that, that it was. Then there's post PTCA restenosis. So that's when you have the stent in and then it, it could be stenosed again. You can get um, clogged again and needs to be restented. 3.3% um, to 1%. Here's where the big difference came from. One of the big differences came from in the event rates that are being described. Um, elective revascularization. So this is an, another point I wanna make. So sometimes you don't have to get um, a stent put in to one of your coronary. I'm sorry, in fact, let me just be clear. Um, Isaac, do you know what I mean when I say stent? Nope. Okay, so I should have probably cleared that up a while ago. Um, so one thing that a cardiologist can do is if you have a blockage in the coronary artery, they can put a stent in to open it up. Let me see if I could find you a good image of that. Um, mm -hmm. That just uh, really solidifies that in. Um, so yeah, here's a good one. So I'll just post that to you and you can actually share it with the, uh, the viewers so they can follow along. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's an intervention that to basically open up, open it up. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing you can do, you can imagine that there's a way to bypass the blockage also. If you take like an artery, you transplant an artery from one part of your body uh, to another part, you can actually just bypass like a, like a detour. You can mm -hmm. bypass it. Um, I should probably get you an image for that as well. Okay. Um, let's, let's see what I can do here. So, oh, here we go. So let me show you this. So another thing that can be done is a bypass. So if you look at that, you can show it to the audience as well. So this, if you have one area where there's a, a segment of plaque that's clogging up an artery, what you can do is you can take a, another artery uh, that a patient has, hook it up to the aorta and have it attach itself to the coronary artery after the blockage happens. Hmm. Do you see that? Yep, I get the idea. Yeah. And so that way, you can still get blood to the area of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's sure. a bypass. Now, both of these things are called revascular. We, can, we call them revascularization. Yeah, okay. cause it because that's what we're doing. We makes the flow of the vein or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Now, that can be done electively or it can be done non-electively you can it can be done because hey you have a heart attack you need to do it now or you're going to die or something or it can be done because there's a surgeon that wants to do an operation and they're not going to do it until you actually because they're afraid of the heart and they're not going to do it until you revascularize the heart like that would be an example of an elective revascularization mm -hmm. you see the difference um yeah so there's the you're just talking about whether you're choosing to or not so in one case Right. You might it's like there's a surgery or some procedure you might want done but the uh, surgeon puts a condition on it that you have to get revascularized so you could elect to get revascularized if you want to the other case is like well i mean you just have it done because you're gonna like die immediately if you don't or something or right soon yeah exactly sure so that's where we saw a difference. So in the Esselstyn study, there are very, compared to the Lyon diet heart study, there are very few people who went for elective revascularization, 3.5% to 13.9%. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, why is that? I have no idea. Um, could it be because their disease was better in the Esselstyn? Maybe. Could it be because uh, they were just more stubborn to get revascularized? Maybe. I don't know. But in any case, it's important to note that it's very controversial to include that as a CVD event. Because, mm -hmm, sure. and you can imagine why, because it's the subjects deciding to get a revascularization instead I think it of might... something happening. Yeah. Well, one, one random speculation, of course, you'd need to do further work to prove this. I think it's got anything to do with age. Like, how many old people really want to get, like, their heart opened up or something? I mean, that might... It could, could be. Could Who be. knows? You never know. Okay. Yeah. So, you can imagine why it's controversial to include elective revascularization as an event. Because... Especially... Yeah, go ahead. It just mm -hmm. seems like especially so when you're talking about like, you know, different groups, different people, different, you know, not not that I think mm -hmm. this is it necessarily, different age, you know, it's, it's like when you have different people with all these different factors, who knows what's accounting for why some of them would elect to get revascularized and others wouldn't. It's not clear that's a consequence of the, uh, the intervention. Right. Um, exactly. You don't it's not clear that an elective revascularization is a consequence of the intervention or not. Um, where if someone's like making well, if someone's gonna, it could be, someone can, an intervention could lead someone to make a choice to get revascularized or it cannot. It's just less clear than it's like, okay, well, someone got a heart attack. It's something like that's like you're just, whether if a patient had a conversation with a doctor and you made an elective decision to revascularize versus, oh, an event happened, the patient got a heart attack. That's something that's organically happening in the patient. Um, so that's why it's controversial. Um, right. And then stable, stable angina. 
Um, and of course, by the way, that's the that's the one that Jeff Nelson actually figured uh, the composite outcome three. That's the one he picked out, the one where the that included the composite outcome that included the elective revascularizations. Right. That's the one where um, sure. Nelson and S and Esselstein, by the way, um, mm -hmm. both picked out uh, and uh, stable angina. Here's the other thing. Stable angina. So 8.3 percent of the patients in uh, the Leon died heart study had stable angina and had were, had an event in which they were hospitalized for stable angina. Esselstyn, we don't know. He didn't report. Now he reported a percentage of patients that got better from their angina, but he didn't report any hospitalizations for stable angina. Angina is when you, is you have the, the chest tightness yeah. um, or chest pain uh, and, and uh, there's a stable or Unstable angina. Stable angina is when it resolves with rest. Unstable angina is uh, when it does not resolve with rest. Mm -hmm. um, so the 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 other th disanalogy here is that you're including events in the Lyon diet heart study that weren't actually counted in the Esselstyn study. So mm -hmm. it, you got to be apples to apples. You sure. can't, you can't just, yeah, if they're just counting a whole bunch of events and Nesselton isn't reporting those events, I don't, I, it's an insane comparison. So if you do compare apples to apples, there's still problems. Okay. So there's still different people. It's not within the same study. Um, there's still, it's not the same investigators. It's not the same diagnosticians. It's not the same, uh, they have different characteristics. They, there's an age difference. There's a smoking difference. There's all sorts of difference. It's still problematic, but at least it's far closer to the truth than the insane, absolutely insane comparison. Right. Of doing a subgroup of a subgroup of an experimental group and comparing that with an experimental group. Yeah, of course. That's nuts. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, loud and clear. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So they need to they need to pull that. That's in, that's crazy. They need to take that. It, that should not be put in presentations anymore. Uh, yeah, that is, I, yeah, I I would say that that is such a firm debunk right there that uh, this video will send this to Jeff after, and if he doesn't post a hmm. correction on that video, I'd consider him a bad faith actor, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, that's All that's right. just now not that's just not correcting when there's an absolutely clear error. Like, I mean. You have, you gotta, when you get something wrong like that, you have to be willing to correct it. If you're not willing to correct it, I mean, that, I don't know what else to say. It's just, you're a bad actor. Um, okay, so you want to go back yeah. to the video now? What do you want to go Yeah, we'll to? go back to, no, 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 I'm done with the video. We'll go back to the tweet, the tweet thread. Okay, so be it, Avi. We're doing it. Let's go back to the tweets. Return to yep. fucking hell. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so, uh. <laughs> Yeah, I've got number All seven right, so, up right now. Yeah. Yeah, number seven is what we just res uh, what we responded to. So we yeah, can we read that again CVD now with with this yeah. in our mind? Can I just read it? regardless yeah. whether CVD was reversed or stabilized, or what degree of each one? Essie, Ornish, Pritikin, all have better outcomes and beat the pretty mid lion Mediterranean diets for reversal and much better outcomes than standard cardiology care. Yeah. So and and we know like. <laughs> We know how he'd go about making this point. There's a video where he does it. It's just, uh, yeah, you're not comparing apples to apples. That is a good, thorough debunk. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to continue, yeah. go, go ahead. Sure. Pritikin has a page on this and watch a short video. This is where Gregor's mom reversed or stabilized her CAD and add 31 more years to her life after having been sent home to die by a cardiologist. He continues, want more studies on stabilization uh, as key to stopping CAD. Many have demonstrated how quickly the coronary artery endothelium stabilizes in response to lipid lowering diet or drugs. Again, Jeff, we're, we're not disagreeing with the potential to stabilize plaque. We're not gonna disagree on the potential um, for lower event rates. I, I agree with you on that. I agree that a whole food plant-based diet, I agree that a vegan diet can do that. Um, I don't agree with you that oil is something you need to take out of the diet. Um, I think that's crazy, but I don't disagree with you that you can stabilize black. I don't disagree with you that you there are interventions that can lead the disease to not progress. Sure, if and if you watch the video, you'd know that. Um, 
And then Esselstyn states, if you never rupture your plaque, then you have made yourself heart attack proof. Is that the same thing as reversing CAD? Semantics, whole food <laughs> plant-based, <laughs> uh, no oil diet, uh, saves lives, stops coronary artery disease. So, no, it, it, Jeff. He's just equivocating around between reverse yeah. and stop. It's ridiculous. I mean, imagine calling that semantics. Like, so you can be, say there's a cliff and you're driving at it, right? <laughs> Is there a distinction between stopping your car and driving your car backwards, right? It's just semantics. You don't think that those refer to clearly distinct yeah. situations? In, in e but Isaac, in either case, your heart's your 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 car to, car is not going to crash into the wall. It's like saying right? that, like you know, this this might be an exaggeration, but it's like saying that, like you know, punching someone and like headbutting a wall are the same thing because neither of them are riding an elephant. It's like, <laughs> well, sure, two things cannot <laughs> be some other thing, and that doesn't mean they're the same. And you get to chalk it up to semantics. But we can go with a tighter analogy, like. Just moving towards an object versus being stationary relative to it versus moving away from it. Like, I mean, to just to just equivocate moving away and <laughs> being stationary, and then call someone who points out the distinction, you know, basically just suggest they're they're over focusing on semantics or something. It's like it's ridiculous, yeah. right? And especially, yeah. it's especially bad. Like, it's one thing to, to dishonestly call criticism, well, I guess there, I said dishonest too. I, I mean, I can't help but read it that way, but we won't, we won't I can, say that. You can't help it, you think he's dishonest, right? Well, I mean, thing, it's just, it's, yeah. The thing is, humans have, like, a certain, like, psychological, like, they have, like, psychological faculties, and they naturally make judgments about each other. Now, I try to acknowledge when I'm making a judgment that I couldn't support with like arguments like i can't prove to you that jeff's dishonest and i'm not even sure that i believe that but i seem to naturally gravitate towards that when i see some of this shit but whatever forgetting forgetting that um it's it's bad enough to chalk up criticisms of your view to semantics when there is this clearly difference in in what like like there's a big content difference and first of all semantics are are important but when the way that someone like anyone who spent time with logic will obviously know semantics are hugely important. But when someone says semantics, what in the context like this, the idea I get is that we're, we mean the same thing. We're just using different words. And it's, it's like, or it's just a, a trivial little use of language. It doesn't really matter. It's like, that's the kind of thing they're saying, right? And it's one thing to do that, just like generally speaking, in the average context, when you're saying someone and someone points out that it doesn't make sense. Oh, it's just semantics, right? It's, it's, extra bad though when it's in a context of you're this guy with a huge channel putting out health information that people are going to make lifestyle choices based on right don't you think you have an obligation to be responsible in your messaging i mean i don't think he does with this one i don't think he cares about interacting with critics um i don't think he cares about being held to account at all frankly but yeah i mean chalking up the distinction between reversal or non-progression to semantics <laughs> it's just uh I mean, it seems ridiculous to me. Uh, we can we can let yeah. people determine for themselves if they think you know moving backwards is the same thing as being stationary. Yeah. All right. So that's really um, all I had to say for now. Um, we may do a, a further further videos on this topic um, and on the people in the plant based community who I believe are um, who I disagree with and who I believe are. Um, steering our community the wrong way. Um, and by that, I specifically mean just misrepresenting the data. But well, Jeff, listen, if you're watching, yeah, go ahead. No, go, you go for it. Yeah, Jeff, listen, if you're watching, I'd be happy to have a discussion. Um, whenever you're ready to step up and have a discussion with me, um, look, you, you can keep me blocked on Twitter or whatever, I don't care. Just have it as, whenever you're ready to talk, I'm ready to talk to you, Jeff. Yeah, and I, I'll say one or two things also. We'll just talk for a minute or two before we close this off. So one thing is that I've seen you at this point. You know, sometimes I do the reaching out, sometimes you do the reaching out. But I've seen ultimately you end up in a situation where you're talking to some vegan health person or, you know, ethical, you know, activist or whatever it might be over and over again. And it's it's just interesting to see 
who sticks their feet in the mud and refuses to accept criticism even when they can't refute the criticism versus who's honest, right? Some people you get a bit of resistance, some people you just get none and they're like, wow, okay, that makes sense. Thanks for the correction. So, I mean, we've seen just like really stellar behavior from certain people. That is not a sarcastic stellar, like actually stellar. Vegan gains, 100%. The guy always takes correction. If he doesn't understand the correction, he's not going to say, oh, okay, I'm wrong. He's going to say, wait, I don't see why that makes sense. But you show that guy an error and you can clearly explain why it's an error, 100% he'll correct and you won't hear making the claim again. I mean, you've we've seen that with a few claims at this point. I just have no doubt that Vegan Gaines is a good actor. Um, happy, healthy vegan. Right. I agree there. Yeah, 100%. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, there's like in, in other contexts, like ethics, like people like James and Joey. Um, even you know, recently with Mike, although there's there's been obviously some tension with Mike, whatever. You know, Mike took correction. Uh, at the end of the day, he took the correction on the heart disease thing. You know, he's he's got some attachment to that idea. We but we can all be attached to things sometimes. End of the day, he took the correction, right? But it's interesting to see who won't, right? And I'll 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 save myself naming names right now, even though it would be funny too. But there's a lot of people who just plant their fucking feet in the mud, and uh, they just want to live inside a bubble, and they don't want to enter contexts where they could get called out on something that uh, they're not able to defend, right? And the solution to all of this is just examine your own values, ask what you care about, and Hopefully, you care about the truth, right? Defending the truth is effortless because you just get to say what you believe. You don't have to be scared to go into situations. And if you end up being wrong, it's not painful. You just go, oh, okay, well, <laughs> I was in error. I'll just change my view, right? All the resistance to talking and, and the fear of engaging with people, that, as far as I'm concerned, usually just comes from a place of having a belief you want to maintain and that you don't want to collide with anything that might throw it into question. And uh, last thing here, unless you have anything to say about that, but I mean, I assume you probably just agree with all that. No, I agree, I agree with all that. Last thing is just uh, Happy Healthy Vegan got in on this, so I just want to read you his comment. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, just at the Oh, before, of... I'm sorry, Isaac, I just have to interrupt. I just want to respond uh, to the chat. So um, people are getting the time frame on this mic thing wrong. So someone, people are in, in the chat and I've noticed some people commenting this. So Mike the Vegan literally just finished making a video reaffirming heart disease was reversed when you corrected him. So it was probably a little difficult, LOL. Um, I don't know if you're getting the timeline wrong here. So that Mike the Vegan made a video um, reaffirming that heart disease was reversed before we had the debate. Correct. Uh, yeah. Unless I'm wrong, and he literally just dropped no, one right I, now. No, I just I just checked, and he he obviously wouldn't do it. He's, he's talking with you guys, and making sure that he's he's like, you know, he's running he's running his points past the people who raised the problem with his view, which is what any reasonable person would do. Um, so yeah, no, the sequence of events was Mike made that video, then we had a conversation. Mike's now, uh, Mike accepts the critique. And uh, he's going to make some kind of follow-up video on, you know, what claims he thinks he can make and which he can't and, you know, where he sits on it. And uh, if, they, if what they meant was just to say it was probably particularly psychologically difficult for Mike because he had just put out a video on the topic. I, I mean, yeah, I think that would apply oh, any time. Oh, I see what you're saying. If, yeah, if, yeah, that, yeah. if that's what they're saying, yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that's true anytime someone, like, yeah. like I, here's my defense of this thing. And then it's like, well, that's what we're taking shots at. Like, oh, okay, sure, fair <laughs> enough, but... Okay, so here's Ryan's comment. He says, uh, yes, Jeff, I for one would like to this discuss, I mean, I assume he means to see this discussed in a debate with uh, Avi. You can both present your best evidence and best arguments. I'm not sure where I stand on this, so that would be perfect. Jeff says, thanks, Ryan, that doesn't interest me. I may do a video with Dr. Esselstyn, who has angiograms showing between 30 and 95% reversal. Uh, you can um. also read his book, cheers. Uh, so oh, go, go read a book, though. This is not, oh, my God. Jeff, come on, man. This is not how we determine whether an intervention <laughs> reverses CBD, by, not by cherry-picking some best performers in any intervention. This, this, come on. Uh, oh, that's Ryan, Ryan fires back. I've had his book for seven years. I'm just saying the issue can be discussed more. Right, yeah, to a fair response by Ryan, but... Yeah, and I just, it's just this whole attitude that I just find really off-putting here. I mean, like, we might have talked a bit of a bit of trash about his, his attitude, but you can bring us around by having a conversation. Obviously, we won't, you know, if 
you come around and have a talk, we're not going to hold hold against you, and we're happy to be polite. So you know, no, no bad blood or whatever, even though we disagree. But uh, this attitude drives me completely nuts. Okay, it's like someone criticizes him, and he just he just throws numbers at them in a tweet. Doesn't no interest in having a proper discussion about it. It's like he just wants to put something out there. And it's like that's the extent of it. There's no like, there's no proper engagement on it. There's no really taking a critique on it. It's just like it's kind of it's like a stone wall basically. So you know, I just find it disgraceful because I think that what we all should be doing like is trying to have true beliefs, not promoting bullshit that you know, fits our agenda. Um, anything else, Avi, or should we uh, should we end the uh, stream, Arino? No, that's it. Let's. I think we we. We can't stream here. <clears throat> so Jeff, come on. Let's, let's have a conversation. If not, at least don't subtweet me. Like that's just really cringy. Like this is the this is the really cringy thing that you're doing. You're responding to the things I'm saying in a in a medium by which I am blocked from responding to you. It's just ugh. Anyway. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna criticize you, but you don't get to defend yourself. Right? It's like <laughs> okay, yeah, great. I mean, at least at least he has the courtesy to subtweet instead of directly mentioning you while not giving you the right to respond. I think, but that really though, that would just increase the percentage of people who would find the behavior cringy, right? Like, don't it's it's cringiness just isn't as obvious when you don't mention them by name. But anyway, we're now just talking about how we don't yeah. like the way he's behaving. Uh, we both agree it's irresponsible. He has a big platform. He's making health claims. You're an expert with relevant credentials who's criticizing him. He should be willing to engage, and he's not. That's bad. End of story. If you disagree, you just have fundamentally different values from either of us. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to reach out, we're happy to set up a conversation. I'm happy to moderate. Um, you know, we, you can watch that conversation with Mike. Alvi will be perfectly friendly. You'll get to make all the points you want and get anything answered that you want. Uh, and you know, if you don't want to message Avi directly, just shoot me a message on uh, Twitter, and hopefully, hopefully we can make this happen. Anything else, Avi? Nope, that's it. All right. All right. Peace out. Mm -hmm. Thank you.